This video is on integration, which is also known as anti-differentiation. So if we have been given the gradient function of f dash x, then you can find the original function by undoing the differentiation. This is what we call integration. Basically just going from our derivative back to our original function. So this is our notation, the big long kind of s thing, that is the integration symbol. When we have the dx, or it'll be d, a letter at the end, that tells us what variable we are integrating. Now this is the actual integration part here, I'll just underline it in pink. That's our formula for the integration, which is 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by x to the power of n plus 1. Then we have to add c, which is an unknown constant. Now the reason we have to add the c is if you think about when we do the derivative of a function and we have just a constant on its own, say 4 at the end, when we do the derivative of that, that just disappears. So when we're doing the integration, we don't actually know if there was a constant there or not. So we do the plus c to represent there could be a constant there that we may not know about at this stage. Let's do some examples for some practice. Example 1. If f dash x equals 2x, find f of x. So we know our gradient is 2x and we want to find out what the original function is. So if we just do this rule, so we, got the, we want to find the integral of 2x, and then we'll write dx after it because x is the variable we are integrating. This will equal, now the x here is to the power of 1, so we just need to remember that. For the integral here, we're still going to have this 2. Then we're going to multiply that 1 over the n plus 1, so 1 over our n, which is 1, and plus 1 to that, multiplied by x to the power of n plus 1, so 1 plus 1. And then we have to do the plus c, so if we simplify that, we'll get 2 over 2, x to the power of 2 plus c, which just equals x squared plus c. Now obviously you don't need to do all these steps. If you can just go straight to the answer with these questions, that is okay. Example two, if our derivative, or if dy dx equals x to the power of negative four, find an expression for y. So once again, here we're going to have the, we want the integral of x to the power of negative four, and then we'd write dx, and that is going to equal, so we're going to, there's no number in the front, so we don't need to multiply our fraction by anything, it will just be one over n plus one negative 4 plus 1 multiplied by x to the power of negative 4 plus 1 and then our plus c. Simplify that 1 over negative 4 plus 1 will give us negative a third and then x to the power of negative 3 and then plus c. This formula as well is in your formula booklet so you do have it there to help you in your exams. Next example, just, we're just doing a few in different forms so you can see how you may get it in an exam. Example 3, f dash x equals 4x cubed plus 10x to the power of 4 plus 3, find f of x. Very similar to the other two, we've just got three terms and when you do that, what, like we do with the derivative, we just do each one separately. So we're wanting to find the integral of 4x cubed plus 10x to the power of 4 plus 3. Once again, a dx because our variable is x. And we just do each bit separately. So it'll be 4x cubed will become 4 on, then it'll be the power, which is 3, so 3 plus 1, x to the power of 3 plus 1, plus 10 divided by n plus 1, so that'll be 4 plus 1. And then plus 3. Now, remember, this one's an easy one. If you've got a constant on the end of an integral, we just add x to it. And if you think the derivative of 3x is just 3, so the integral would then be 3x. Then we can simplify. 4 over 4 is just 1, so this would be x to the power of 4. Plus, this will be 2x to the power of 5, plus 3x. And then we need to remember our plus c, and I've just forgot it on the line above as well. There you go. And then example four, find the integral of 2x minus 5 over x cubed dx. Similar to when we do the integral, we want to separate our fraction. This would be, so, so we would have the integral of 2x on 
x cubed minus 5 on x cubed dx. And we can simplify this, which will be the integral of 2 on x squared minus 5 on x cubed dx. And then we obviously we don't want fractions. And we'll get the integral of 2x to the power of negative 2 minus 5x to the power of negative 3. And then we can do our integral, which would be 2 over the n plus 1 negative 2 plus 1 and then x to the power negative 2 plus 1 minus 5 over negative 3 plus 1 x to the power of negative 3 plus 1 plus c and then simplify. 2 over negative 2 plus 1 would just be negative 2 x to the power of negative 2 plus 1 which is just negative 1 Minus 5 over negative 3 plus 1 will actually give us a positive because we've got two negatives. And we'll end up with 5 over 2 and then x to the power of negative 2 plus c. And then from there, if you want with this one, you could write it with positive powers, but there is no need. And last example, what we sometimes will need to do is we will be given enough information so we can actually find what the c value is. In example five, we have if dy over dx equals x squared plus one and y equals five, when x equals three, find an expression for y in terms of x. We want it, so this means we are wanting to find an equation y. We have been given the derivative and then we've been given uh, x and y value on our original graph. So first step is to do what we have just been doing, which is to find our original function. We'll have the integral of x squared plus one dx Want to do this bit first, so this will equal 1 on the power plus 1, which will be 1 on 3, x to the power of 3, plus 1x, or just x, plus c. Now we've been told in y equals 5, x equals 3. So this equation would be also the y equals 1 third x cubed plus x plus c, and then we can sub these values in. 5 equals a third multiplied by 3 cubed plus 3 plus c and then just rearrange and solve this and if you do that you will then find that the c equals negative 7 and when we can rewrite our final answer which would be y equals a third x cubed plus x minus 7. So in this case, the first step is the same, just find, working out the integration for to find the original function. We can substitute our points in to find out the c value. And that is the start of integration.